Council's latest proposal. Jim Scott, NBC News, Cleveland. In Des Plaines, Illinois, near Chicago, a man who served time in prison for sex crimes was let out. Today, they found the bodies of at least three young boys buried under his house. He is charged with murder. Here's Jim Cummings. Police have been watching John Gacy's suburban Chicago home for the past 10 days. They became suspicious when 15-year-old Robert Peast disappeared after he allegedly was last seen with Gacy. This morning, police searched Gacy's home and found the decomposed remains of three bodies in a dirt crawl space under the house. They suspect there are several more bodies buried here. It's suspected because of the looks of the area down in the, uh, the uh, crawl space. Uh, there are some other mounds and uh, appears to be more there. Gacy is a 36-year-old building contractor who reportedly dressed like a clown to entertain a children's party. Prosecutors say he once went to prison for a sex offense in Iowa. This afternoon, Gacy was charged with murdering Robert Peast. And after hearing the remains of more bodies were found at Gacy's house, Judge Marvin Peters ordered him held without bond. At the hearing, police said Gacy has confessed to the Peast murder. He will be examined by a psychiatrist. Meanwhile, investigators have started to dismantle Gacy's house and garage as they continue to search for other bodies in this quiet suburban neighborhood. Jim Cummins, NBC News, Des Plaines, Illinois. In Marion, Illinois, a 17-year-old girl, a former high school cheerleader, is still out. Bill Sternoff, NBC News, Salem, Oregon. Police today found six more bodies under the John Gacy House in Norwood Park Township near Des Plaines, Illinois. The six bodies bring the total found under this house and garage to 15, all appearing to have been teenaged boys and young men. And police, digging cautiously with garden tools, say they've now covered only one-fourth of the space under the house. David? The mid-air collision in San Diego, killing 144 people. The women had to make is already final. James Polk, NBC News, Willow Island, West Virginia. John Gacy, a man who liked to put on a clown suit and entertain children. Now he is charged with one murder, and the police have found, at last count, 27 bodies buried under his house and garage, and two more in a nearby river. While Gacy is in a hospital bed, tied down. Here's Jim Cummins. John Wayne Gacy was also Pogo the Clown, who loved to make kids laugh. He was married twice, divorced twice, and had two children. A Democratic Party precinct worker with political connections. A modestly successful building contractor. His neighbors knew him as Johnny, the life of the party. He was a very good neighbor. And we socialized with him. Carol Samankowitz was once Gacy's housekeeper and had a couple of dates with him. You didn't expect it from him. I had, uh, he was a nice guy. This is the other John Gacy, in leather restraints at a jail hospital, charged with one murder, the suspect in at least 28 others. One of John Gacy's neighbors said, all of this is like a nightmare, and it will be several years before this neighborhood recovers from that nightmare. Gacy's home has become a tourist attraction. Every day for a week, outsiders came here to see bodies brought out of Gacy's house. His neighbors will never forget that. You, you see bodies in your sleep, you see him in your sleep. It's just too much. Today, a young man named Jeff Rignall filed a criminal complaint alleging Gacy raped him. And Rignall suggested Gacy may have had an accomplice. The crowd stayed away from Gacy's house today because police said they think they found all the bodies in the house. They plan to search the yard when the sub-zero weather breaks. That's when they also plan to resume dragging this river where they found two bodies so far and expect to find three more. Jim Cummins, NBC News, Norwood Park, Illinois. The United Airlines plane that crashed near Portland, Oregon on Thursday night People, he says he believes the Russians will do it unless world opinion stops them. In Chicago, the John Gacy mass murder trial is nearing an end. Norma Quarles has details.
prosecution summed up its case against John Wayne Gacy, accused of killing 33 young men. Prosecutor Terry Sullivan called Gacy's insanity defense hogwash. In his confession, Gacy admitted killing the young men after having sex with them, then burying most of the bodies under his house. The prosecutor called Gacy a vile, evil, diabolical murderer who must be held responsible for his acts. Gacy chuckled. The photos of the 22 identified victims were displayed. Murder, Sullivan said as he pointed to each one. Murder. Relatives of the victims wept. Sullivan told the jury that justice implores them to find Gacy guilty of murder in the worst degree. The defense argument is that no one could kill so many people, bury them under his own home, and be sane. After final arguments are concluded, the judge will charge the jury, and the jury will begin deliberating the fate of John Wayne Gacy. Norma Quarles, NBC News, Chicago. In Miami, investigators have begun working on a case they're calling the law. Phillips, available in fresh tasting mint, America's true blue friend. John Wayne Gacy was found guilty today in Chicago of the murder of 33 young men and boys, all of whom he either induced or forced to have sexual relations with him. He buried most of the bodies under his house and got rid of the others elsewhere. Norma Quarles reports. It took the jury of seven men and five women less than two hours to find John Wayne Gacy guilty of murdering 33 young men. Gacy was convicted of murdering more people than anyone else in U.S. history. He showed no emotion as the verdict was read. Gacy, a building contractor, was arrested in December 1978 in connection with the disappearance of a 15-year-old boy. Later that month, police began uncovering bodies from a crawl space under Gacy's suburban Chicago home. 29 bodies were eventually found on Gacy's property, four others found in a nearby river. Gacy had confessed to the killings, but his lawyers claimed he was insane. Gacy said he has four personalities. Families of the victims wept when the verdict was read. I spoke to Mrs. Eugenia Gotzik, mother of 17-year-old Gregory. I can't help it. I cry all the time because I'm happy that they convicted him. I hope he does get the electric chair. Then it'll make everybody feel better. I'm sure it'll make the other mothers feel better, too. There will now be another hearing, and this same jury will begin deliberating once again. This time, they will deliberate on whether John Wayne Gacy should be put to death in the electric chair. Norma Quarles, NBC News, Chicago. There's more trouble these days for women whose mothers took the synthetic hormone D. Whether he will be a candidate for the Republican nomination for president. In Chicago, the jury in the Gacy mass murder trial will decide a sentence today after finding Gacy guilty of murder. Norma Quarles reports. John Wayne Gacy was called the worst of all murderers by the prosecutor, a man responsible for enough misery to last a century. It took the jury less than two hours to reject the defense argument that Gacy was insane and to find Gacy guilty of murdering 33 young men during a seven-year killing spree. Gacy showed absolutely no emotion as all the murder counts were read, but he winked before he left the courtroom. Gacy's killings, which began in January 1972, ended in December 1978 when police discovered dozens of bodies buried in makeshift graves under his suburban Chicago home. Gacy admitted luring the young boys to his home with promises of drugs, liquor, or construction jobs, then forcing them to have sex with him before killing them. The Prosecutor future, William Kunkel had told process. the jury not to that show sympathy, only justice. Court. What I suggested to them was that if they allowed that man, John Gacy, to walk the earth, then indeed God help us all. It was an emotional time for relatives of the victims, and many like Ken Peast, whose brother was killed, want revenge. There's only one solution now. What is that? I want him to see him go to the chair. And Eugenia Gotzik, mother of another victim, tearfully agreed. I hope he does get the electric chair. Then it'll make everybody feel better. I'm sure it'll make the other mothers feel better, too. And now the same jury that found Gacy guilty will decide whether he should be sentenced to die in the electric chair. Norma Quarles, NBC News, Chicago. And we'll be back in a moment with a look at the financial news and Willard Scott's weather. But first, this message.
expected by next March 31st. A mass killer who has been in jail for 15 years faces execution next May. In Illinois, a date has been set for John Wayne Gacy's death on Friday. Gacy was arrested in 1978 and convicted in the sex slayings of 33 young men and boys. The U.S. Supreme Court rejected what is seen as the last viable appeal last October. Fire has destroyed part of the fairgrounds in New Orleans. It's one of America's For 14 years, serial killer John Wayne Gacy has been living on appeals. Illinois' attorney general set up this legal war room to handle today's two final appeals filed by Gacy's lawyers. He won't beg for his life. You can exhaust all the legal remedies possible, but no clemency please. Right. The scene in 1978 was gruesome. Body after body found buried beneath Gacy's suburban Chicago home. All young men aged 14 to 21. In the end, Gacy, a successful businessman who often dressed as a clown to entertain children, would be convicted of 33 deaths. In a telephone interview last week, Gacy claims he did not receive a fair trial. For 14 years I've been fighting the same battle. Of All I want is the truth to be learned, that I did not commit all the crimes. There were rallies today by those who favor capital punishment. John Wayne Gacy, it's time for you to die! and those who don't. We're not civilized. We're a violent, terrible country that does not respect life, and so we set a bad example. Earlier today, a helicopter transferred Gacy to Stateville Prison. There, at one minute after midnight, 28 witnesses will watch as a lethal injection cuts off his breathing and stops his heart. Gacy's lawyers argue the process is cruel and unusual punishment. The families of Gacy's victims call it justice. Talk about inhumane. Did Gacy think of anything being humane when he killed, when he tortured and killed our boys? No. Since 1980, the state has spent $164,000 on Gacy's incarceration. More than 40 judges have heard his many appeals. He hasn't been successful yet. If he fails again, he'll be the second inmate executed since Illinois reinstated the death penalty 17 years ago. Don Fertangelo, NBC News, Joliet, Illinois. military operation in Africa since U.S. troops pulled out of Somalia back in March. One of the nation's most notorious serial killers is dead. John Wayne Gacy was executed by lethal injection early this morning at the state prison in Joliet, Illinois. Gacy had spent more than 14 years on Illinois' death row after being convicted of the brutal murders of 33 young men and boys. Most were found buried beneath his home in, in suburban Chicago. President Clinton says powerful forces are trying to undo his presidency. It is unlikely that she will name an outside investigator. Police in Chicago said they have found no evidence that serial killer John Wayne Gacy buried bodies of his victims in the backyard of his mother's apartment building. Holes were dug in the ground Monday after a former Chicago, Chicago detective said that he had seen Gacy near the building with a shovel. Gacy was executed in May of 1994 for killing 33 young men and boys. He had told police he killed 45 young men and the other 12 victims, the reported victims, have never been found. Today in Russia, political leaders join ordinary citizens at the funeral of a potential... ...bodies buried in his crawl space and nobody really believed him. 33 in total, young men between the ages of 14 and 22, lured into his home, sexually assaulted, and murdered. Gacy, who sometimes worked as a volunteer clown, was convicted and eventually executed by lethal injection, but a mystery remained. Eight unidentified victims. Now more than 30 years later, with modern technology at his disposal, Chicago Sheriff Tom Dart wants to know who they were. Now through DNA, Families that had no hope of having a match now have the absolute hope. We can be definitive in saying this is or is not your loved one. So the police dug up the eight sets of remains and sent them to this lab at the University of North Texas for DNA analysis. To find possible matches, police have opened a hotline and are asking families like the Bodions for DNA samples. 22-year-old Edward went missing in 1978. It's been 33 long years not knowing what happened to my brother. I would like to know one way or another. 
Investigators believe most, if not all, eight victims will be identified, but they uncovered new leads in this dusty Chicago evidence room. While looking through the boxes, investigators also found plane tickets to at least 10 different states during the same time he was murdering young men here in Chicago. They thought to themselves, if he was murdering them here, what are the chances he wasn't committing the same crimes while he was on the road? At the time, there were no computers or missing people databases, tools investigators have now used to possibly link Gacy to 27 unsolved cases around the country. We're running out some of these leads right now, and we're just finding some intriguing patterns. Technology can now answer decades-old questions about one of the most monstrous crimes in U.S. history. And chillingly, it may be raising some new ones. Stephanie Gosk, NBC News, Chicago.